Okay, guys, what I want to think about now is a um, uh, something that, that for some of you will be new. Uh, those of you who took physics with me last year, we, we never dealt with um, th uh, this new concept that I'm about to get into. Um, and that's the, the concept of non-uniform acceleration. So non-uniform uniform acceleration. This is this is this might be new to some of you, but I think we'll see it with some uh, calculus skills. This isn't too too hard. Uh, what do I mean by non-uniform acceleration? I simply mean that the acceleration value is not constant. So up until this point, um, we haven't dealt with changing acceleration. So you might, for instance, um, have had an acceleration value. What was it? I forget. Was it four? I think it was acceleration value of four in the previous videos. It meant that. That meant that the acceleration wasn't changing with time, it was remaining constant. But it, it is possible to have a changing acceleration value. Um, what that means conceptually is not only is the velocity changing, but the rate at which the velocity is changing is also changing. Um, and the term for this, it, 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 has a, it has a name, it's called jerk. Jerk. And it's abbreviated with a J. So jerk is defined as the change in the acceleration over the change in time. That's that's jerk, and this the units here would be in standard units, meters per seconds cubed. Um, that's meters per second squared per second, or meters per second cubed is the unit for jerk. Um, and I'll talk in a minute when, uh, how is it that you might see this in, in a real physics problem or uh, in the real world? I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that in a little bit. But let's just examine this for a little bit. So, for instance, uh, you might have an acceleration value that's changing as a function of time. So it might be the acceleration value is 3 plus 2t. Okay. So what this means is the initial value of the acceleration would be, if you plug in t equals 0, the initial value would be simply 3. But then as time wears on, this acceleration value is going to increase. At t equals 1, the acceleration is 5. t equals 2, the acceleration is 9, so on and so forth. So not only is the object's velocity increasing, but the rate of increase is also going up. Um, and so to think about this, first of all, uh, the, the jerk function would be the derivative of this. So uh, the jerk function would be d over dt of this thing, right? 3 plus 2t or in this case it would be plus 2 would be the jerk, plus 2 if we're in standard units, again, plus 2 meters per second cubed. Um, so hopefully that makes some sense. I, I want to think about how this would actually play out in a problem. Let's imagine that this was the acceleration, 3 plus 2t. In other words, you had a jerk of uh, plus 2 meters per second cubed. Well, what, what, if you were, what if this were our starting point right here? And I wanted to know something about the velocity of an object at any given time. Um, well, before we had this equation, before we said that velocity is equal to the initial velocity, v naught plus at. Um, problem is that the acceleration here is, is changing with respect to time. Well, how would we deal with that? Well, I can just go ahead and take the derivative of this thing, and I get um, v now is going to equal v naught plus 3t plus 2t squared over 2. What have I done here? I, I think I said to the derivative, I'm, I'm to the integral, right? So I'm going uh, in the opposite direction. I have the acceleration expression, and I'm taking the, the integral of that. And this is what we get. We have an expression now that will allow us to find the velocity at any time t. Given this acceleration expression, we can now find the velocity. Um, if I want to know the, the, the position at, at, at any time t, I'm going to go ahead and take the integral again. I get the initial position plus, I've got to take the, I've got to take the integral of, of all of these terms here. So this is going to be 3t squared over 2 plus, I've got to deal with this, right? The 2s are going to cancel out. So this is going to be um, t cubed over 3. All right, so now I've got some expressions. I I haven't told you, you know, we, we, we don't know what x naught is, right? We don't know what that is, and we don't know what v naught is either. I haven't given you enough information to, to figure out what those are. But um, 
uh, what we figured out is we figure out expressions that will allow us from this value of acceleration, we can figure out the velocity at any time t and the position at any time t. Um, this is something we couldn't have done last year without, without this little bit of calculus, but even with just this little bit of calculus, we can go ahead now and, and figure out how to determine velocity and position for non-uniform, cases of non-uniform acceleration. Um, let me think for a minute, or let's talk for a minute about when you might see this. Well, how would you have a non-constant acceleration? Uh, where I'm not going to go into this any, in any detail right now because we're, we're going to find out about this later, but you might remember that what causes acceleration, well, force causes acceleration, right? That the, the force and acceleration are directly proportional. Um, so you're going to have a constant acceleration with a constant force, but what if the force isn't constant? What if you have a variable force? Well, that's the case where if you have a variable force, you're going to get some non-uniform acceleration. So, um, again, this this is not uncommon. You can imagine cases where something is being pushed or pulled, but it, the, the force with which it's being pushed or pulled changes over time, and therefore there's some, uh, there's some changing acceleration going on. By the same logic, I'm, we're not going to deal with this, but by the same logic, you could go ahead and take the derivative of of the, the jerk function, right? And there is such a thing, it's called jounce. Jounce is defined as dj dt, dj over dt, it's the derivative of, of, of jerk, right? And then there are even, you could take the derivative of that, the derivative of that actually has a name, it's called snap. And then the der derivative of snap is called, uh, snap, I think it's called crackle, snap, crackle, and then pop. These are sort of facetious names, um, snap, crackle, and pop, um, not really, don't really have a whole lot of uh, meaningful use, but um, the point is you can continue to take derivatives and get these, these you know, higher, higher order things going on here. Um, this is about, uh, jerk is about the most that we're going to be dealing with, so just so you understand what that's all about. Um, I wanted to mention that because uh, we will see this this concept of non-uniform acceleration. So um, that's all for now. Next concept, next up, we'll talk about free fall.